welcome to worship. This is a Celtic worship service and we are glad that you are here and that we are being accompanied by Ginny O'Flynn on the harp and her dog tonight. And I think <laughs> your dog is perfectly well-timed. Um, Lauren, can you advance to the next slide for me? Thank you. This is the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. And we are very glad that you are with us this evening. This is an evening prayer service of, uh, you know, we've put a couple of things together. Yes, some things ancient from Celtic tradition and some things from our own Book of Common Prayer. There is some silence in this liturgy, although it's probably not as prolonged as it would be if we were in the chapel worshiping together, but there, there is some silence. We hope that this time will bring you renewal and God's peace. There is an opportunity to light a candle um, at, as an intention of your prayers. And uh, so if between now and the time of prayers, you'd like to get a candle and then light it, we would love for you to do that. A reminder that this is a, a, a Zoom meeting format, which means it's much better if everyone except the speaker is uh, or the musician is muted. Uh, uh, we hope that you are saying uh, the words of the people along with Lauren, who is, is our people tonight, uh, and in your own home on mute, just because uh, Zoom just doesn't do multiple voices as well as we'd like. So after a few minutes of silence, um, we'll start, we'll Jenny's going to offer a prelude. At eventide, there shall be light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. And my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Abide with us, O Lord. For it is toward evening. Psalm 17. Hear my plea of innocence, O Lord. Give heed to my cry. Listen to my prayer, which does not come from lying lips. Let my vindication come forth from your presence. Let your eyes be fixed on justice. Weigh my heart, summon me by night, melt me down. You will find no impurity in me. I give no offense with my mouth as others do. I have heeded the words of your lips. The footstep, my footsteps hold fast to the ways of your law. In your paths, my feet shall not stumble. I call upon you, O God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and hear my words. Show me your marvelous loving kindness. O Savior of those who take refuge 
at your right hand from those who rise up against them. But at my vindication, I shall see your face. When I awake, I shall be satisfied beholding your likeness. Our first lesson is from the book of Genesis. The same night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket. And Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. second lesson is from Matthew. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself, but when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, well, bring them here to me. 
Then Jesus ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Indeed, thanks be to God for this story that comes to us that we all know that we've heard how many times in our lives. This story called uh, the multiplication of loaves and fishes, the story called the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 or the 3,000 or the, somebody mentioned today, they never heard that line before, the 5,000 men plus women and children, <laughs> besides the women and children. And it can, I love that it follows the parables uh, because it describes kind of what it is like, the kingdom of heaven. But in between the parables and this gospel is another story. And in fact, in all of the gospels, and it is the story of Herod's birthday party. You know the one. The one where John the Baptist loses his head. The one where Salome dances. A very different kind of feeding. I think it's so interesting the way the gospel writers do this for us. That gives us this, this amazing difference. This amazing difference of abundance, of plenty of feeding each other versus Herod. And we, what we know about Herod and his very hard heart, Herod is the modern, is the, is the first century equivalent of Pharaoh, isn't he? He's the empire. He represents, oh, kind of what is wrong, what we can identify as, as um, not quite right. And here it comes, right up against this beautiful story of Jesus practicing sharing the thing we all learned in kindergarten or that people attempted to teach us in kindergarten, sharing. Such a different story. Such a different possibility. The end of Herod's story, John the Baptist is murdered. At the end of this story, of this gospel, there's 12 baskets of extra food. Quite a different story. Quite, quite a different way of seeing the world, of experiencing life, of seeing justice lived out. I was reminded this week that Jesus, really for everything else that he taught, he taught and tried to live out a life of justice. He called us all to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to visit the prisoner, to take care of the widow and the orphan, to accommodate the stranger and the alien and the immigrant. It's not very popular thinking these days in some circles, and yet there it is. And here is Jesus saying to everyone there, this is the justice of this. This is, I am present among you when we share. We are present to each other when we share what we have, not, not what's left over, not what's extra, but when we share what God gives us. And then together, we see the miracle happening. And it is only then, in the together, this invitation that Jesus says to the disciples, which to me sounds terrifying, if I were to hear that, no, you feed them. <laughs> 
No, you do it. Right? No, you do it. And yet they believed, they listened, they followed through. They, perhaps they wrestled like our brother Jacob. Perhaps they did. Perhaps we wrestle with this very idea of how we are to distribute more evenly what we have with everyone so that all can be fed. I'm thinking, I'm looking at Lauren, I'm figuring out a way Lauren can take her giant cabbages and share them with, with everyone. But sometimes it's a little bit more than that and it's a little bit more complicated than that and in the world that we now live in, I get that too. And yet, here are the words. No, you do it. No, you, you feed them. You can do it. And uh, when we do, beloved, I feel confident that there would be baskets and baskets of what remains. Amen. We believe that God is present in the darkness before the dawn, in the waiting and uncertainty, where fear and courage join hands, conflict and caring link arms, and the sun rises over barbed wire. We believe in a with us God who sits down in our midst to share our humanity. We affirm a faith that takes us beyond the safe place into action, into vulnerability, and into the streets. We commit ourselves to a life of service, to bear responsibility, to take care of one another, to stand with those on the edge, to choose life, and be used by the Spirit for God's new community of hope. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We offer to you, Lord, the troubles of this day. We lay down our burdens at your feet. Forgive us our sins. Give us your peace and help us to receive your word. We give you thanks, our Father, that you are always present in all things, each day and each night. We give you thanks for your gifts of creation, life, and friendship. We give you thanks for the particular blessings of this day. Lord, graciously hear us. 
into your hands, O oh God. We place our families, our neighbors, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Sorry. Whoops. And all whom we have met today, enfold them in your will. Lord, graciously hear us. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we place all who are victims of prejudice, oppression, or neglect, the frail, the unwanted. May everyone be cherished from conception to the grave. Lord, graciously hear us. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we place all who are restless, sick, or pray to the powers of evil. Keep guard over them. Lord, graciously hear us. Risen Christ, bring renewal to the land and to the church, to ordained ministries and religious communities. Raise up new callings and communities which meet the needs of today. Lord, graciously hear us. Spirit of the risen Christ, as the lamps light up the evening, shine into our hearts and kindle in us the fire of your love. Amen. Lord, peace you commanded, peace you gave us, peace you have left us. Grant us your peace from heaven in all the days of our life in your peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all, always. And with you. In gladness, we present the offerings of and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. You'll see the link there um, at the bottom of the screen. I've also placed it in the chat. Now that it will, we will run this slide again at the end of worship, and we invite you all to consider how you give to Christ Church, and a reminder that the work of the church continues even as we're uh, worshiping in this format.
Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn, but the word, but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love. So mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace, as children of one God, to whom be dominion and glory now and forever. Amen. And keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. On our heads and on our houses, the blessing of God. In our coming and going, the blessing of God. In our life and believing, the love of God. At our end and each new beginning, the arms of God to welcome us and bring us home. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.